All right, so that's our 1998 Chevy K1500, a $3,200 truck we just bought. I genuinely think that is one of the best trucks I've ever driven. Maybe the best truck ever made. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why. All right, no, really. I've been very fortunate to drive some really cool trucks from the latest and greatest from Chevrolet, Ford, GM, Toyota, Nissan, but this truck just has something magic about it. It's simple, it's basic, it's robust, it's affordable, it's easy to fix, it's cheap to fix, and they just never stop running. Add to that some of the cool stuff on the inside and outside, and I mean, how could you go wrong? This is the only truck that ever needs to exist. Let's talk about the engine. Now this truck is known as the GMT 400 and it replaced the legendary square body, but it modernized a lot of that truck's shortcomings. Luckily, one thing it didn't really modernize was the engine. This was the last of an iconic breed, the small block 350 Chevy. Now, this one doesn't really have that engine, this one's a 305, but it still is the same basic architecture as the legendary 5.7 liter V8. Now this one makes about 230 horsepower, 280 pound-feet of torque, which is plenty. But this basic architecture dates back decades and decades and decades. They built millions of them. They're dead reliable. And starting in 99, after this truck and the half tons, they went to the 5.3 liters, which are also good engines, but they don't quite have the basic simplicity of the good old-fashioned 5.7, or in this case, the 5 liter. One of the big improvements on the K1500 over the older square bodies, like the K10, was the axle setup. Now, of course, the off-roader will disagree with me, but in 1988, they switched from the solid front axle to the independent front suspension, which, of course, is probably worse off-road, maybe is a little bit worse for super long-term durability, but the front ends on these trucks are so soft and so squishy. When you're driving around on the road, 99% of the time, your back will thank you. The best part about this truck is the way it drives, and I don't understand why new trucks can't be like this, but the steering, super light, this bench seat is like a couch, and the suspension is made out of butter. It's like riding around in a 70s Cadillac. It is so incredibly soft. When you hit bumps, it completely just eliminates them. Sometimes it gets a little bit too floaty. I think this one has some worn out shocks with 200,000 miles, but we can fix that. Overall, though, the ride, perfect. This truck also marked a very important departure for Chevrolet because for decades and decades and decades, if you got a C truck, it was two-wheel drive. If you got a K truck, it was four-wheel drive. For example, this one is a K1500. That meant four-wheel drive, 1500. And then this badge on the side would indicate the trim level. This was a Cheyenne, so this was one step above the work truck, but one step below the top dog, which was called the Silverado. Now, of course, every half ton is called a Silverado, but back in the day, Silverado meant something really special. One thing that is very odd and maybe not so great compared to modern trucks is the cab configuration. This is, of course, an extended cab, so we've got the large front doors, and then if you get into the back seat, that doesn't move. That is a fixed panel. It was an option. You could get an optional third door, but you couldn't get four of them and a lot of trucks like this one had two. So getting into the back seat's a little bit of a faff. Um, I find that on this truck, the passenger seat slides forward more. It actually slides forward quite a bit. My dog can easily get back here. And then of course, when you're back here, it is uh, d definitely a penalty box, <laughs> to say the least. Not a lot of leg room. The seat is bolt upright. I obviously wouldn't want to take a road trip back here, but it's much more useful than a single cab for carrying stuff, groceries, um, pets and the like. So I would definitely recommend the extended cab, but try to find one with the third door because it'll make your life easier, at least getting in and out of the back. Let's give it some acceleration here, pulling out onto the main road. Unleash the five liter, full throttle, 3,000, 4,000 RPM. You know, it really isn't that slow. A lot of people say that 305 feet is kind of a boat anchor. I don't think that at all. I mean, this is way quicker than an 01 Ram we have, and that's got a 5.9 liter Magnum. This thing hauls butt, especially with the 373 rear gears. And then we get to cruising. Oh, it's just, it's perfect. It's quiet. It feels really well screwed together. Even with over 200,000 miles, it doesn't creak or squeak that badly. Nothing clunks. Transmission is good. I mean, these trucks were built to last forever. 
So the key on this truck is tiny. I mean, it really is small. That's what it looks like compared to my palm. And to, of course, unlock and lock the truck, you put the key into the door and then twist it one way or the other. There's no central locking on this truck, although I believe it was an option in 98. But with the door unlocked, you can just swing it open. Now, one common issue with these trucks are the door pins. The doors kind of sag over time, and then you gotta really slam them. This truck definitely has that issue, but we'll get it replaced. This door panel perfectly represents why I love this truck so much, because it blends simplicity, durability, with just enough modern tech. So here's what I mean. Manual windows, those will never ever fail, but power door locks, listen to that satisfying thunk. And power door locks are great because then you don't have to go reaching across the other side to lock and unlock the door. It's just a nice little piece of technology, nothing too sophisticated, nothing too complicated, uh, but it just makes your life a little bit easier and more usable. And then of course, a big chunky door handle. I love the steering wheel in this Chevy. It's ginormous, first of all, but it's just kind of like soft and it just caresses your hand. And look at the airbag. I mean, that looks like a squishy airbag. If that were to explode in your face, it would just kind of like give you a hug. Probably not, but that's the way it's designed and that's the way it looks. And listen to the horn. That is a stately refined horn. So the gauges on this truck are very useful. Tachometer, speedometer, and look at this, four gauges that actually display information you need to know. What a concept. Fuel, voltage, temperature, and oil pressure. Now when you start the truck up, glides in a life, but this little green light is pretty funny. You see that little green light there? That green light lets you know that your daytime running lights are on, but there's no way to turn that little green light off. I think the idea is when you're driving along and it gets dark, you look down and you see the green light and you remember, oh, gotta flip on the headlights, but it's always there when you're driving around in the day, even with the lights off. Think this truck is a base model? Aha, uh -huh. no, you're wrong. This one has some posh options like the cassette player. Yes, that was an option. You could also get a CD player, but we're not bougie enough for CD players in this truck. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the cassette that's in there definitely jam, makes some funky noises, can't eject it. The FM radio works about half the time, so uh, the radio is pretty kaput in this truck. I also love the cup holders in this truck. You're probably thinking, oh man, only one cup holder. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at that. There's actually two of them. Granted, this one is not as useful as the primary one, but it is nice to have a couple of options. So down here we've got our cigarette lighter, and to the left of that, under flap A, is a 12 volt power outlet. Under flap B is a 12 volt power outlet. That's right, there are two power outlets, maybe even three if you consider that one. Uh, what's that, two inches apart from each other? I guess it's nice to have options, and of course down here we've got a ashtray, but really it's just a coin holder now. Another useful feature down here, by our knees, the crotch vent. That's right, there's an air vent that blows cold air in the summer um, on um, on your, uh, your family jewels. This down here is your four-wheel drive lever, a big chunky thing, and it does something really cool. Take a look up here at this diagram. When I put it in the four high, whoa, love that. The actual front axle illuminates. It says four by four, and then of course, put it in neutral and zip all the way up to four-wheel drive low. Uh, there's a neutral section in between them, and then of course the light continues to illuminate, but that, oh, what a satisfying piece of tech. So for 3200 bucks, we bought a rust-free truck, 206,000 miles or so. It's uh, got a strong frame, steering's good, brakes are good, engine's good, uh, transfer case works, four-wheel drive works, things that don't work, the radio, air conditioning doesn't work apparently, but apart from that, it's good to go. The bed on this truck has a horrible aftermarket topper, which is going to be going away. Of course, no dampened tailgate, but big useful bed. I think this is a six and a half foot bed. You could also get the full on eight foot, but super usable. Of course, the tailgate comes off really easily. You just disconnect these straps here and then pull it off when you get it to a 45 degree angle. So this right here is a fuel door on the K1500. It of course doesn't lock. And interestingly enough, it's got this little rubber thing that holds the gas cap in place, but it's like they knew that would break and they give you a little clip here just in case that breaks, you have a place to store your gas cap, uh, you know, 300,000 miles down the road. This right here is your very basic light control. You've got off, parking lights, and headlights. This controls your dimmer, and this is the dome light switch, actually, so you can turn it on just by plopping that button in there. 
One of the coolest parts about this old truck is down here, the RPO codes, the service parts identification codes in the glove box. This tells you exactly what options this truck had when it was brand new. And you may recognize some of the codes, um, stuff like G80 would mean it has a automatic locking rear differential, but there's also some more famous ones like Z71. How about Z06 on the Corvettes? What about ZR1? These are all RPO codes. Obviously compared to new trucks, it's not as well equipped. I mean, there's no satellite navigation, no 12 inch screen, but it's a truck. It's built to do truck stuff. Uh, it's got everything you need. Cruise control, power steering, power brakes, ABS, V8 engine. Gets about, I don't know, 15 miles per gallon. What else do you really need in a truck? It'll, it'll do everything that a new truck will do. It'll even tow 6,000 pounds according to the owner's manual with this gear setup, which is not bad. I mean, it's no 12,000 pounds on the new F-150, but it's pretty good. This truck just works. I mean, it's comfortable. Uh, it's refined. I, I just love it. I don't know if you can tell that, but I love this truck. So there you have it, the 98 Chevy K1500, three grand of fury, and I just love it. I mean, it just, it fits me so well. It's so soft and comfortable. The steering is so light. The engine is whisper quiet, super smooth. Uh, they're dead reliable, and if they break, I mean, you can fix it with a shoestring and a waffle. Well, let us know what you think of the Chevy 1500 in the comments section below, and as always, this has been Tommy with TFL Classics. Go over to tfltruck.com for the latest and greatest in new and used truck reviews.